This is Smart Penguins, and in this video we'll continue building our game together. And this is where we left off. There's a link in the description if you want to download and follow along with us. At the end of this video, we'll be able to click on the item and we'll be able to drop items in the world. One problem that we have with our UI, if you stretch the screen, our inventory UI gets clipped off at the bottom. To fix this, let's go to UI screen and go into our inventory and we'll add stick to edge node. We'll choose bottom and set vertical to 80. Now our inventory image is fine, but our inventory items are not. Let's go and do the same thing for inventory items. Now we'll fix that. Right now when we click on our item, the inventory count decreases and when we get to zero, we still see the item and we can continue clicking to the negatives. What we'll do right now is when we get to zero, we'll make the item disappear. To do that, we need a way to see if our count variable is at zero. There isn't a node for that, so we'll create our new node. Let's go to advanced, drag in script, let's rename it to compare, and we'll add an input value and outputs greater, equal, and less. Let's add an attribute, number, and we'll call it number. The number attribute is going to be the value that we compare our input value to. Let's go inside our script, and in the script, we'll use init and signal function. To optimize our code a little bit, instead of pulling attribute value each time we need it, we'll store the attribute value inside our script. So let's create a new variable, let number, and in our init function, we'll set number to this attribute. And the name of our attribute is number. Now, anywhere we need in our script the value of number, we can use the variable number to pull it. In our signal function, let's add an if statement. If value, value is the input that we get, is greater than number, the number that we're comparing to, what we want to do is emit the signal. This emits signal, and we want to pass in the name of our signal, which is greater, and the value will pass is true. Now, whenever our value that we pass in is greater than the number that we are comparing it to, we'll have a signal of true coming from our greater output. We also want to check for equals a less. By using else, the if statement can be chained together. So if we do else, we can check for another condition. If value, we'll use the double equals to check if it equals number, then we emit true to our equal output. And the last condition we want to check is less. If value is less than number, then we emit true to our less output. Now we have our compare node. The place where we want to add it, when we get a touch and it's true, we load our variable count and add a negative one to it. We want to add our compare logic after we add negative one. So let's move it here and connect out to value and the number that we want to compare it to is one. If count is less than one, we want to switch state to empty. Click play, and now if we click an item, when we get to zero, our item disappears. What we'll do next is, when we get to one, we'll make our label to disappear. To do that, we need to connect our count to a state machine. Let's add a state machine. Two states, on create we'll switch to state one, and let's use the output of our compare. When it equals one, we want to switch our state to two, which will turn off our count. Let's press play. Now, when we get to one, we don't have our label anymore. And when we get to zero, we have an empty, but our slot is still clickable. Let's make our item not clickable when we get to zero. The easiest way to do that is by turning off is touch but the default is touch does not have an enabled or disabled input. So we'll have to add that into our is touch. To do that, let's go inside. And what we want to do is add a new variable, enabled. And inside our signal function, we'll set enabled variable to value. And now we want to go wherever we have an emit signal. We want to check if not enabled. And to do that, we can add an exclamation mark before the variable which means inverse of the variable. So if the enabled is going to be true, inverse of it is going to be false. So now we have if not enabled, we want to return. Any code in the function after return will stop from execution. And let's copy that. We'll need to add it to touch begin function. 
and another touch begin function. The reason why we have two touch begin functions is because we have different settings for touch mode, the ABB mode and raycasting. And the last thing we need to do is add our enabled input. We're done with our modification. Let's add a state machine with two states and the first state will be when we enable it. We can trigger the second state to disable it. The reason it works, when the state of a state machine changes, it sends out true to the state that you switched it to and all the other outputs receive a false output. Let's go to our compare. And if we have less than one, we want to turn off this touch. Let's connect to state two. Let's click play. And now when we get to zero, our is touch is turned off and we can see our slot is empty now. Now let's add ability to spawn the object into our world when we click on it. To do that, let's go to our mind map and let's remove our 2D world by selecting it and clicking backspace, add a 3D world. Let's connect it to start and to our UI screen and let's change our background color of our world. To do that, let's click play and Let's use a picker to select the color that we used for our UI background. Click OK. And let's go to UI screen, remove our background image. And if we click now, we still have our background. Let's go inside our 3D world and we can go to our buildbox documentation by going help buildbox documentation. We can go into world space and we can see what's available here. We have our asset panel, we have our outliner, we have our scene editor, our animation editor, our scene selector, in our option panel. First, let's add our items in. Let's go to our asset folder. Let's add an apple. We'll add as an object. And let's add our carrot as an object. And we'll go to asset libraries, add. Let's use a cube. Let's rename our cube to spawner. And let's turn on physics for our apple to dynamic and carrot. Let's remove carrot and apple from our scene. And let's add a spawner to our scene. To do that, let's go into our camera view mode. So we would place our spawner relative to our view. We'll place it at the top here. Let's go to our spawner. We can remove the 3D model. And what we want to add is a spawn node. Select the asset, we'll select apple. And let's duplicate it by clicking S and change this to carrot. And now we need to add a way to communicate between our UI and our spawner to know which item we're trying to spawn. We can use a receive and send node to create that communication. Let's add a receive node to our spawner. Let's go back to our UI screen in our inventory item. Let's add a send node. How receive and send node work, connect the input and the value of the input will be sent to the receive of the event. We have the event name that connects the receive and send together. Let's change our event name to drop item. And now we need a way to know which item we're dropping. Currently we're using a random node to select which item we're dropping. So what we can do is use our variable init, duplicate it by clicking W, remove the connections. When it's over, we're spawning an apple. So let's create a new variable called item ID. And we'll set item ID of apple to one. Let's duplicate it again by clicking S and connect to under. And that will be our carrot. And we will set the value to two. Now what we want to do is on touch, we want to load that ID variable. So let's copy a variable load. Let's connect to send. And our variable name is item ID. We get the value and send it to our send node. We're all done with sending ID over. Now we want to go to our spawner. We will need our compare node to our spawner so we can copy it by selecting the compare node and on our keyboard, pressing Command C or Control C to copy. Now we can go to our mind map, our 3D world, go inside our spawner. Now we can Command V or Control V and we'll get our compare node in here. That's how you can copy nodes between node editors. Now let's connect our receive to our compare value and we'll compare to one. If it's one, then we want to spawn the apple because that's the ID of apple. Copy the compare node. If it equals Spawn carrot. We'll set the number to two. That's the idea of our carrot. And let's go to our receive node and rename it to draw item because that's the event we're listening for. Click play. Now you can see if we click on a carrot, we're dropping a carrot. And if we click on an apple, we're dropping an apple. Cool. 
Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's add some randomness to our spawn. Let's set it to 2, 2 for our random X and Z. Now if we drop it, it drops in a random place. Cool! Now our UI can interact with our world. This will be it for this video. In the next video, we'll be working on how to collect items from our world. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, write in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel to not miss out on our next video.